Hey guys, I'm Jean Reitberg, and today I want to talk to you about combining two images using the web and phone-based app Adobe Express. I started using Adobe Express to create stories layouts for Instagram on my phone, and then I found it useful for making quick banners with text overlays, and later started using it to create YouTube thumbnails. Adobe Express is free to use with some limitations that may apply to this tutorial, including the ability to refine a cutout. And we'll talk more about that later. Uh, we have access to Express Premium as part of our Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, but it's also available as a standalone app for about $100 a year. I use Adobe Express because it makes it really easy to play around with new layouts and it keeps all of my collage graphic files in one place and synced across all of my devices. I like that it provides a really wide range of backgrounds, icons, fonts, and other design assets that you can use royalty free. I still go back to Photoshop fairly frequently, especially when I need to do color correction, lots of like cloning and Photoshopping, or when I need more control over the exported file size. But I use Express almost every day and I would have to say I have a lot of fun creating and playing around with it. If you're interested in more tutorials like this and all things related to underwater photography, make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and click the bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. We also send out a weekly newsletter loaded with tons of useful content related to underwater photography, travel, cameras, and more. We'll post a link to subscribe to the newsletter in the description section of this video below, along with links to Adobe Express and other things we talk about in this video. So the image we're making today is pretty simple. I needed a thumbnail for a YouTube video about diving around Catalina Island off the coast of California. I have a really great photo of Logan, John, and myself gearing up to go dive but the dive van in the background is a bit dull and it seems like the photo could have been taken anywhere. I want a YouTube thumbnail that really has a great Catalina vibe. So I'm going to knock out the background and replace it with a view featuring the iconic Casino Point structure and the hills of Avalon in the background. So let's open up the Adobe Express app on the browser. Uh, I'm going to use Chrome, but you could also use Safari, or maybe you're working on this on a phone where you've downloaded the Adobe Express app. The opening screen gives you a lot of options for what size of file you want. You can make your own file size, uh, but I'm going to choose the YouTube thumbnail because that's how I'm going to use this image. And I'm just going to click on that to start a new one and it pulls up a lot of uh, pre-designed templates that you can use if you're doing a thumbnail, if you're doing all kinds of different layouts. It has ones where you can just replace the text and the photo with one of your own and make something that's, you know, kind of cool or professional looking. But I'm going to do mine from scratch. So I close this sidebar and I'm going to start out using the photo of the divers uh, rather than the background photo, because I want to be able to see what I'm cutting out and make sure that my outline is good on the file. So i am got that file on my desktop in JPEG format. I had to do some pre-conversion of that from the iPhone format, H-E-I-C, to JPEG, because Adobe Express currently does not recognize the H-E-I-C format that iPhones use and I hope that they do sometime in the future. But I've already done that conversion and I'm going to drag it and drop it onto my canvas in Express. You can see it's kind of small when it drops in. So I'm just going to enlarge it by dragging the corners of the image so that I can see better what's going on in it. And then 
All I really have to do for most of my images is just click this button, remove background. And it'll think about it for a second, and then you'll see the background will go away and it gives you a gray background behind the people. Now, I was saying about the free version versus the premium paid version of Express. And this is a feature that I do use a lot when I'm combining images, which is to edit the cutout. And you can see when it knocked out the background, I also lost my most of my scuba tank. I lost um, my hoses that go to my first stage. And we lost this wall that John and Logan are sitting on. So they're kind of now floating in space. Um, so I do want to edit this cutout to make it look more realistic. So I'm going to do what they call restore. I click on the restore button and now I'm seeing a masked version of the background and everything that's in red on this mask, that's what it's going to take away from my image. And then it leaves as the normal color, anything that you're going to have in the result. So what I need to do is basically paint over with my cursor, anything that I want to remain in the end image. I've got a big one right here, a big cursor that I'm just going to wipe through here to put this wall back in. So I'm just swiping over anything that looks like the wall to me. I know a wall is, you know, got straight edges. So I'll come across over here. I'll come across this direction and I'll come across like this. And so that's putting the wall back into my image. I also can use this larger cursor to kind of go over this tank. I think I can do that fairly accurately for everything except for the buckle that's holding it on. So I'll swipe that back in. I'm gonna glance through this. It looks like Logan's tank was cut out a little bit. Now, this image was a little more challenging because of the closeness between the color of a scuba tank and the color of concrete. Um, but I have to say on a lot of images where there's more differentiation, the cutout feature is really super accurate and I often don't have to do anything at all to these. So I need to get some of these details that I see where there's the hose. Uh, there's actually a little bit of background that I want to go away around John's tank. And I have to use a smaller cursor to get those. So I'm going to take it down to, I don't know, maybe size four, three. And I can use command plus on a Mac uh to enlarge this view and i'm just going to take this cursor and restore the hose that's coming out this side the hose down here this little bit of the buckle and maybe even this part of the Uh, regulator up here, a little bit on Logan's tank. Um, not sure what this is over here. I don't think we need it. I think John's hose got cut out a little bit. And then I think this is looking pretty decent. Uh, when we put this on the background, we can fine tune it a little bit more, but I just want to get the base level for what I'm doing. Um, then I've got this part of the background that I still want to erase and not restore. So I'm going to just click on the erase button and now it's going back to that gray background and I'm going to zoom in with my command plus and now I can see I can get an even smaller cursor to fit in these little crannies. Um, the actual cursor on express for this feature it has a little bit of um feathering on the edge of it so it's not like 
giving you a precise pixel cutout, which usually works in my favor. But I have to say that for a lot of what I'm doing, this is gonna be viewed at kind of very small images, like uh, used mostly on a phone or displayed very small. So these tiny details are not going to be perfect. This isn't gonna be a mural on someone's wall. And to be honest, you're not gonna see most of this in our application. So I think if I wanted to be a perfectionist, I could go back to my restore key and really clean up this hose as best as I can. And you see that even though I went over the line of the edge of the hose, that feathering kept it from taking too much of that background. And it's now a nice cleaner line. And I'm going to just scroll back over to my hose and take away some of that so that that darkness doesn't end up highlighting that in the resulting image. Depending on what you're putting it on, you know, leaving more or taking more can either work for you against you. Um, you know, if your background was dark against a light item, then that's going to really highlight it when you put it on top of another image. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. Uh, and like I say, everything's about making it easier on myself. Um, so I'll just run along this hose really fast so that I don't highlight it in the end and really show people that this was cobbled together. Do the same thing along the tank so I don't have that dark line um, outlining it. And these edges look good. I'm gonna scroll around and just, just to be perfectionist, I'm going to go, as I say, and knock off any of those highlighting um, outlines that will give us away and say to people that this was definitely a faked image. Um, one thing you'll notice is we've got this hair problem because Logan's hair was blowing in the wind and you can see background in between all these little pieces. And that's where, depending on how much time you wanna spend on this photo, you could go in with this and take some of those out, right? And just keep working on that. This one number is as small as you can get. And I'm already at what they call the 600% zoom. It doesn't seem to let me zoom beyond that. Oh no, it did go to 800 now. The zoom in feature is a little sporadic for me. Um, so you can continue to work on that to really uh, take out the background behind all those little hairs. Or if you're like me and you're using this image for smaller phone displays, you can just say that's good enough and I don't think really anyone's gonna be looking that closely at this. So I'm going to click the check mark that says, I'm done with my work on this cutout and I'm gonna go back to uh, my bigger image where I can do now the layering of the background. So when I zoom back out, now I have a white background with my divers on top of it. And on the white background, you can really see what I was talking about here with the dark outline on a white background. So we'll have to keep that in mind when we put our background image in and just look for that. So I've got my background image also on my desktop. I'm going to drag that over, drop it onto my file and pull it to the corner, resize it by pulling the corner of that. So I'm filling the whole frame with my background, but obviously I don't want my background to be on top of my divers. If I click on that and select it, it will now show me my layer stack in the bottom corner of Express. So I'm gonna click that stack. I've got the background selected. 
it turns into a hand where I can click and drag it underneath the divers. Now I can click the divers. I can make them even bigger so they're more prominent in the thumbnail. Um, and I can also click my background and put it kind of wherever I want to in relation to those divers. I'm going to have to make this background even bigger because I want to see the Casino Point building over to the side of where Logan's sitting. That's the, what I was saying, the iconic building at this dive site. And I want to make sure that people can see that. I'm going to make the image bigger oops, and drag it over there so that you can see that beside him. Now, if you look over at my hose where we were talking about the dark outline, I can no longer see that because the hills of Avalon are behind it. It looks fine. His hair, you know, if you were really studying it, maybe it looks a little uh, hairsprayed with the background in it, but I think at the YouTube thumbnail level, it's going to be okay. And so I think that's it. I can export the photo. I could add additional text over it in, uh, in this sidebar over here. They've got shapes. If I want to get crazy and put some sort of shape on top of it, I could do that right inside of the Adobe Express app. But I'm happy with what I've done so far, and I think we've achieved our results. So that's really all there is to it. You can download the image as a JPEG, PNG, or PDF. I always choose JPEG, which tend to be smaller unless I specifically need a transparent background PNG. For YouTube thumbnails, you're looking at an image of 1280 by 720 pixels, and the resulting file needs to be under two megabytes. Currently, there doesn't seem to be a way to control the resu resulting export size of the file on Express, so I tend to throw the JPEG back into Photoshop if I need any kind of compression. Let us know in the comments whether you've tried Adobe Express and if there are any other editing techniques or tutorials that you would like to see from us in the future. Thanks for joining me today and happy diving.